Okay, so let's just start out with a very basic cylinder. Every cylinder is made up of um, a, an ellipse at the top and an ellipse at the bottom connected by two sides. Now, there are variations of this rule, but it's the same structure every single time. Two ellipses and two lines for the side. Go ahead and pause the video and practice that. Okay, so now one easy variation is to change the sizes of those ellipses to create something that looks more like a realistic cup, okay? So I'm going to do a larger ellipse at the top, a smaller ellipse at the bottom, connect those two sides, and now you have something more like a traditional cup that we use. Now one thing I want to show you that a, a common mistake that I see is when the ellipses go here and then... Um, People draw their line, you know, not on the very edge of the ellipse. That looks more like, I don't even know what that looks like, but it's not a correct cup. Do we see how this is correct? Yes, and this is a no, okay? Make sure that your edge lines are exactly on the very edge of your ellipse. Okay, go ahead and um, practice drawing, pause the video and practice drawing some cups. Okay, um, now let's talk about viewpoint, okay? Say these are, this is, these are some scary eyes right here. We learn how to draw eyes later, okay? <laughs> but here's my eye level, okay? This is level with me. Now, um, we're going to learn how to draw ellipses below eye level and above eye level, okay? Now, typically, when we look at a cup sitting on a table, it is slightly below our eye level, which is why we see kind of um, something that looks like this, right? Um, and this is a clear glass that we're looking through. Now, if that cup were to get even lower below eye level, like I'm seeing into the cup more, I'm taller than the cup, I'm seeing into it, that ellipse is going to get wider. I'm going to see into the ellipse, I'm going to see into the cup a little bit more. So my ellipse starts to get taller, and the side of my cup starts to get a little bit shorter. Okay. Now, if I were to see into that cup even more, if I'm standing up, I'm looking into the cup, I'm trying to see if there's any root beer left in it, okay? Um, I'm going to see what's almost like even a circle. See how that is almost a circle? It's just flattened a little bit. And the sides of my cup are going to get even shorter. My bottom ellipse is going to get wider as well. Okay, do you see how my viewpoint is changing as, um, and my ellipse is changing with my viewpoint? Okay, go ahead and pr pause the video and practice drawing this cup at different viewpoints. Okay, another thing I want to show you is right now I've been drawing clear cups because you see my two ellipses and the sides. Now, if you want your cup to be opaque, those, ellip those two ellipses are always there, but you don't see one side of the bottom ellipse. Okay, if, it, if I don't want it to be a clear glass, I'm going to erase that top line right here. Still have a curved bottom. See how my cup looks opaque now? I can't see through it. Okay, we'll talk a little bit more about drawing it that way in a minute. Okay, now let's draw um, a cup above eye level. Okay, it's the same structure. I'm going to have um, now close to eye level, my ellipse is going to be very, very skinny. Okay, um, now if I hold a cup slightly above my eye level, I'm going to start seeing the bottom of the cup. Now, you may not be seeing the illusion right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna erase this one line, the back line of the top of the, the top ellipse. Now are you seeing it? Does it look like a cup where we're seeing the bottom of it slightly? 
Yeah, imagine holding a cup above you so you can look at the bottom. Okay, um, then we're gonna do the same thing. Our lips is gonna get a little bit bigger, a little bit taller, I guess. Okay. And for this illusion really to work, I really need to erase that top line. Okay, are we seeing a little bit more of the bottom of the cup? Yes. Okay, and now we're gonna try and draw an ellipse that's so wide, it's almost a circle. Okay, and when we do that, our sides of our cup need to get shorter. And then our base of our ellipse needs to be also very tall. Okay, and I'm gonna erase these lines. And now it looks like we're holding the cup far above our head. It's almost like we're seeing it completely from bird's eye view. Now, if we were to be seeing directly, standing directly underneath the cup, you'd probably see something looks like this. Here's the top rim of the cup. Here's the bottom of the cup, okay? Um, it's a, kind of a weird angle. It really wouldn't look that way unless you added more detail like shading and stuff to make the illusion really stand out. Um, again, if I were standing right above the cup, all you would see is inside the cup and maybe the base of the cup down there. Again, this would take a lot more details and shading to make that illusion look, have, have the depth of the cup, okay? Um, now let's talk about seeing a cup at eye, ink, eye level, like exactly at eye level. When we're close to the eye level, our ellipses get really skinny, right? When we're right at eye level, there probably won't be any ellipse at all. completely flat and completely completely flat on top completely flat on bottom now i can show you a way that's it may look like this sometimes if it's right at eye level it will be completely flat um but it may look possibly something like this so i want you to see the pattern the top of the cup every time it's above eye level is curving upward the bottom of the cup every time it's below level is curving downward see these curves Okay, so it may be possible your object, if it's right at eye level, the top may look curved upward and the bottom may look curved downward. So it's possible that's what a cup would look like at eye level. Okay. So hopefully you've seen that um, if you want to do a clear cup or just learning to draw the structure of a cylinder, um, you're always going to have two ellipses. However, there is a shortcut if you know your object is not see-through um, and you just want to draw the top cylinder, the sides. You don't always have to draw an ellipse, sorry, ellipse, the top ellipse the sides, and then you don't always have to draw the bottom ellipse, you could just curve it. Now, one thing that I see wrong a lot is that I see the ellipse up here, this, and then a flat bottom. I do not wanna see that, okay? That looks more like a french fry container that's all like flat at the bottom than it looks like a cup, a three-dimensional cylinder, okay? So we don't want that. Um, and one thing is you always need to match this curve to this curve, okay? Um, so if you have a very tall ellipse at the top because you're seeing into the object a lot, then um, you don't want just a slight curve at the bottom, okay? We want it to match this deep curve right here. We want it to match, okay? If you have a very narrow ellipse at the top, then your curve at the bottom of the cup is gonna be very subtle, okay? So always match this curve to this curve. This curve matches this curve. Okay, I don't know if I've told you to pause the video yet, but look at how many cylinders and cups I have drawn on this paper, okay? This is how you get good at something is practice, practice, practice. So I want you to pause the video and draw and practice um, five more cups or cylinders. Um, okay, so let's talk about some application here. I'm drawing different items using these um, rules of ellipses. Let's just do a simple soup can, okay? Um, 
I, am I drawing big enough? Maybe I should draw it bigger for this part of the video. Okay, so you've got a soup can, you've got two um, ellipses on the sides. I'm going to save some time because this is an opaque um, object just by drawing my curve at the bottom instead of drawing another ellipse. Um, <clears throat> now, a soup can has a little bit of a ledge to it. So, you know, that very, very, very top of the can is just a little sliver wider than the rest of the can. So add yourself a second line to look like the top and the bottom of the can. Make it a little bit bigger than the sides. So I'm going to bring my sides in a bit. You'll find that little details go a really long way to making things look convincing and believable. Okay, and then let's talk about the label. This is what I really want to draw about the soup can, okay? The label, absolutely not should our label look straight across like this. Er, wrong, do not do this, okay? Um, anything that's going to be on this cylinder needs to curve with the, the curve of the cylinder. So our label is gonna wrap around like that. Okay, same with our text. Say I wanna draw soup. Not super convincing, but if I curve the top and the bottom of those letters, okay, I'm gonna draw myself some guidelines for my letters. Some more curved lines. And I fit my letters within those curves. The top of my letters touch the top and the bottom of the letters touch the bottom of the line. My letters, I mean bubble letters would be even better. Block lettering would be even better. But see how that becomes so much more convincing because even my letters wrap around the object. Okay. Soup cans also have um, some lines in the top and if you just draw your ellipse within an ellipse within an ellipse you'll get that illusion as well okay so you can pause the video i'm just going to keep talking um but you guys and i just noticed this is not very round it should match my curve right here um you can pause the video anytime that you want to get caught up you can rewind anytime you want to see me draw something again but I'm just going to keep drawing some fun objects. All right, now let's talk about a tire. If you like to draw cars, that's great, but tires, students have a really hard time with tires. And you know what? Tires are just cylinders turned on their side. So let me show you how this works. Okay, I've got my ellipse. I've got my bottom ellipse, right? I'm going to just shortcut and not draw the entire ellipse. I'm just going to draw the curve of that ellipse, half of the ellipse. Then I got my two sides. Okay, that is the structure of a tire, okay? Um, so you'll still, you know, if you're drawing a car, you'll still want to look at the tires to see the correct angle and the details, but now you know how to simplify it in your head. You're like, oh, it's just an ellipse on its side. Okay, so draw yourself a tire. Okay, let's talk about a clear glass of water. This is fun because it's just, same rules, I drew a million cups on the other side of this paper, but this um, just has a couple details that help it look more realistic. So, um, one key to drawing glass, or a cup, like a mug, is that there is a thickness to it. So you need to put an ellipse within an ellipse, leaving a small rim, okay? Now, is this a perfect ellipse? No. Um, but I don't want to waste time in this video trying to get everything perfect. Um, you get the idea. Although that was bugging me. Okay. All right. And then I'm going to draw the sides of my glass. I'm going to do a tall glass of lemonade here. Oh, it's not very symmetrical. And then I'm going to draw my bottom ellipse. All right, now I want to draw even the thickness of the sides of the glass. Sometimes there are glasses that, you know, have a thicker base to them. So that kind of, that's a little detail that helps your illusion be more realistic. Okay, do you see how now I've suggested thickness to my glass? Okay. Um, you also might want to include, like, at the bottom of the glass, kind of a suggestion of the back, like, lips, the back of the ellipse here. 
Okay, now I'm gonna contain my clear liquid, my water or my lemonade with another ellipse that fits within that thickness of the glass. It doesn't go to the very outside edge of the cup, it goes to the inside edge of the cup. Okay, and then you've got this cute glass of water. You can add a straw and some ice cubes, a lemon wedge on the side, whatever you wanna do with it. Okay, um, a couple more applications. So let's do a wedding cake, a tiered wedding cake. So I'm gonna do a, start with my little um, cylinder. Now the base of my cake is also going to start with an ellipse, but that ellipse wraps around the base of this other ellipse. So that's step one. That's for drawing a top hat. Okay, you can stop there. Um, but I'm going to keep going and add another tier to my cake. So it's not perfect, don't judge me. I don't wanna spend time getting it absolutely perfect for you guys. I just wanna show you how to apply these concepts to all sorts of situations. Um, like I said, I could go on and on. Oh, the lights just turned off in my classroom, but that's okay. Um, I'm about done, but send me, actually I'm gonna show you one more thing, a coin. If you wanna do a penny or a quarter, same thing, same rules. It's just the sides of your cylinder are gonna be teeny, teeny teeny tiny. And then a quarter has like ridged edges. So you can add that. Okay, and there you have a coin. You could kind of suggest a president's head on there, but it's at an angle, so it will be distorted. And suggest some writing along the edge, and I've got a quarter there. Okay, so for this assignment, I want you to draw a few of these items, take a picture, and I want to see this side too. And I want you to take two pictures um, of all the cylinder practice that you did with me today and upload those pictures. Send me any questions um, that you have and see you later.